Say anything? Stop, stop, please don't. I don't know anything. Anything you spoke. No, sir. I was about to hand me over to Jamie. His onion. You don't want to deal with Jamie, do you? He's either the most strong willed man I ever met, or he really doesn't know anything. Henry, I am going to give you three choices. I'm going to let you go. Go back to your knights. Tell them you said nothing. They may let you live. They'll most likely kill you. Oh, they won't leave me. They're gonna kill my family and make me watch. You them. can run. But it would mean you never stop running. Because what I've learned of these knights, they have a very, very long arm. They just kill me. Would you like that, Henry? Your last choice. Hey, your best option. Tell me everything you know. You're gonna keep me safe, Dad? These knights will never find you. They'll never lay a hand on you. They're gonna attack Fort Sumter. They got men working on the inside. Fort Sumter? I don't know when. No, that's impossible. If they got men on the inside, can happen. Very good, Henry. About what? I mean, what, what about Jamie take care of that? Get to the man. Tell him we need to meet. Yes, sir. And get ready for a long ride. Good to see you, Kate. Sure, Mrs. Brooks, you're late. Nonsense, my dear. We're right on time, especially if you've got what we want. I have what you want. Do you have what I need? Tell me, Kate, what do you know of this? Interesting concept. Funny no one's ever thought of it before. Indeed, shocking that I never thought of it before. <laughs> Is that it? Is that ours? As always, good day. You can come out now, Thomas. They're gone. They are an odd pair. Odd indeed. But they do get me what I need. As Alan needs you. Tired. Apparently horses don't like Jamie. Consequently, it's been a long ride. Could be the smell. I think it might be the smell and the weight. Got agents out back. Good. Matt will meet you downstairs. He's in one of his moods. Alan, if you don't start getting your beauty sleep, you'll end up looking like me. Yes, Mr. President. I'm glad you called this meeting. I've been wanting to speak with you as well. Of course. And call me Abe. You saved my life. You deserve that much. Yes, Abe. Did you know that the Founding Fathers wanted to free the slaves? I heard there was some contention the day they signed the Declaration. I believe it was the only thing Washington and Franklin agreed on. That and the turkey is the national bird. I heard that as well. I faced the same issue that the Founding Fathers faced, the ones who built this country. The opportunity to free men who had never been given the choice before. I have two roads, Mr. Pinkerton. One, I signed this law. The other, Stick with the status quo. If you want my opinion, you free all men. 
You give women the right to vote. <laughs> if only it were that easy. This country sits on the edge of a very sharp sword. On the one side, we all go to war. On the other, the black man continues under the master's whip. Someday, all civilized men will choose freedom. I'm convinced of that. But is that day now? Is the best thing to do always now? What if by my actions I start a war and we lose? Or we win and it changes nothing? Or maybe even makes things worse for people of color? I understand your choices, Abe. Know this, I will do everything I can to make these men free. I know. I heard of your work with the Underground Railroad. Don't worry. Your secret is safe with me. We are looking at war within the year. That's why I asked you here, sir. I have some news. Fort Sumter, the South, they plan on taking it over. Are you sure? It's a pretty good source. It's nice the Golden Circle. They're much larger and more powerful than we even thought. Well, you've been making quite a stir. Congress seems to think I need a private security, some kind of secret service. They're chosen you for the job. You're in the Army now, Major Pinkerton. As always, sir, my men and I will do everything we can to protect you. You need to find these knights. There's more. More? The Western Territory? Ah, yes. They're like a log across the road. You either cut it up or you go around it. I intend to go around it. And you may need to cut through this one. They've become a very large bee's nest. <laughs> bees left to themselves are no harm to anyone. Indeed, they make honey. In any event, a two-sided war would overwhelm us. There's also this. Recently acquired from the other side. Something new, something very special. Taking a look at it, but I'm not really quite sure how it works. And this works to our advantage. Major Pinkerton, using your new commission and the power of the military, I want you to send two men west. Seek out a man named John Browning. I knew him back when I was a lawyer. Give these to him, see if he can make anything out of them. And while they're there, have them meet with the leader of this religious cult and get them on our side. I have just the right people for this. Good. Webster's now your shadow. I'll send more men when I can. And I'll get this secret service of yours up and running. Alan, take care of yourself. I am going to need you, and at your best. Yes, Mr. President. like an ice house in here. And what is that smell? Well, that would be Jamie and the fact he's almost down to his skin. Oh, what have I told you about playing cards with this woman? Same as drinking. And I'll tell you what, this is one man who believes his loyalties to you outweighs all the laws that you enforce. I'll deal with you later. Give him back his clothes. I left him his dignity. It's not like I'd really let him get all the way naked. Jamie, go get dressed. I don't think Alan's in a mood to play. When am I ever in the mood to play? Oh, we have got to get him to bathe more than once a year. He got a haircut. <sighs> Thomas, coffee's on the stove. I take it the president has need of us once again? You could say that, Miss Kate. And I, for one, am glad it's not me going this time. What does he want us to do now? Not us. You and Jamie. What do you know of these Mormons? Them fools who moved out west? Not much, really. Except they're growing in numbers, and some folks are getting concerned. I hear they got <laughs> horns and take more than one wife. Horns? Would these be like bull horns or more antler-like? As for the more than one wife, that much is true. They believe it's God's will. 
They are growing in numbers. The president's worried. There's a war coming. We don't even know there will be a war. Believe me, Kate. Our misgivings are becoming reality. War is coming. And you can bet your last silver eagle that we'll be right in the middle of it. Right, Major? <laughs> this will be a very ugly war. As for the Pinkertons, we stand with Lincoln. You and Jamie head west. Thomas and I are going to stay here. You leave for St. Louis in two days. That gives you a day to clean up Jamie. Oh. And you keep him in line. And no, once you get past Missouri, your badge won't carry much weight. You'll meet with the U.S. Marshal in St. Louis. From there, you'll travel west to the Utah Territory, where you'll meet up with this Mr. Young and um, something else. Make him fall madly in love with me and take me as his tenth and final wife. <laughs> Nothing that extreme. There's this other Mormon, uh, a Browning, some sort of gunsmith, a genius. Take the Brooks' plans, see what he can make of them, and bring him back here. I will do my best as always, sir. Send me word when you can. You'll want to use code. And Kate, watch for spies. Should I be concerned? You should always be concerned, Miss Kate. But in this case, a little extra security on your part would not be amiss. Ah. You may want to disguise yourself. How's your southern bell? Why, my bell rings as good as always, sir. I will deliver your message with haste and be back in time for the war. War? Are you sending me off someplace to rescue a damsel in distress or fight some brigands and come out the winter? Should I tell him or should you? Tell me what, that I'm dashing? <laughs> oh, sir, I do believe a pig is more dashing than you. <laughs> <laughs> oh! You're just going to leave him there? We wouldn't have a problem if he could take a punch, now would we? The president has a secret mission for you and Kate. You're going to head west. Will there be trouble? I always expect trouble, kid. And you're going to have to take a bath. And I think maybe some clothes, new clothes are going to be required. No arguing with me on this one, Jamie. Yes, Mr. Pinkerton. Now wake up, Thomas. I'm tired. I'm hungry. It's going to be a long day. Oh. Oh, that's good. You look great. Thank you, John. You know, I do believe that we have a place for you in our next play. Thank you, sir. Now, there was two of them. They headed out west. All right. Do they still trust you? Of course they trust me. But Henry, sir, they, he got careless. They captured him, they killed him, and they got the plans to the weapon. This Alan Pinkerton has become the thorn in my side. It's time that I dealt with him myself. So what are your orders then, sir? Send some men out west after those two. Jefferson would do well. Then, you stay with Alan. Make sure he trusts you. And report to me. But Jefferson, I heard that he was a madman. Good. That's good. I want them to hurt. We need these Mormons in the war. No one could do better than Jefferson. All right, sir, and what about Alan? When this culminates, the Knights will know what to do with him. I personally look forward to tearing out his tongue. Owen oh, Ayers. Sir. One more thing. If your men are captured again, you killed him. No, better yet. If they understand that capture is imminent, they kill themselves. And, heirs, that goes for you. Yes, Mr. Pinkerton. I do believe you shall be my pièce de résistance. 